welcome to this introduction of Web Image Collector 2013. Here we have the program open and as you can see we start out with this dashboard. This shows you the product license and the status of the product license. It shows you product updates with quick buttons to updating the product. It also shows you the latest news from our website. This is a direct feed of information that we put out for postings and alerts and also a latest discussion section. This will lead you to our forum section on our website where everyone can join along and post questions and answers for the products. At the top you'll also see our direct links to our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube links. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is to create a new project. Now a project is going to contain all of the images that you're searching for on a particular website or when you use a keyword search. This top button here, this is the project button. As you can see, we have a variety of different types of projects that you can create. I'm going to go ahead and choose this. This is the basic search engine project. This is a simple one where you can put in keywords and search the web for uh, various matches to those keywords. All right, so we see the wizard pop up. This is where you type in your search keywords. I'm going to go ahead and stick with dogs and cats and click next. These are the available search engines, and this is the content filter, much like uh, what you would see on a normal uh, image search for the search engines. Here we have the file and image size filters. These are going to block certain images based on the criteria that you have set here. We already have some default values, and these work pretty well for basic uh, keyword search projects, but you can also make some adjustments here to filter out things that you may or may not want. At the top we have a file size filter. This filter allows you to judge the minimum size of the file and the maximum size of the file and skip any files that do not meet this criteria. So if I select this box and I say I'm going to type in uh, 10, so any file that has a size smaller than 10 kilobytes will not download to your computer. We can also select the maximum size. Anything larger than 100 will not download to your computer. That has nothing to do with the image size itself, the width and height. This is the actual file size. And of course we can quickly disable them by unchecking them. The image orientation settings allow you to skip certain images depending on their width and height values. So if you select landscape, you're going to download only landscape based images. If you select portrait, then of course you only get portrait type images. This is handy for things such as downloading a landscape for a, a desktop wallpapers or portrait for perhaps something you could shrink down to your mobile device for a wallpaper on a mobile device. And for this we have the image minimum size followed by the image maximum size. Now this is just like the file size filter except this deals with the width and height directly of the image. Now when you do a basic keyword search you run into a lot of different types of images. This is going to help clean out a lot of junk that you don't necessarily want. And we're going to go ahead and leave the default settings of 200 width by 200 height as a minimum size. This will allow us to download any number of maximum size images. We're going to click Next and give our project a name. Test. Nice and simple. We're going to leave the default location checked. This is the workspace that Web Image Collector will create on your, on your hard drive. And by default, this is where all of the projects will go. So let's start downloading images. Now you can see some activity here in the console view. You can also see that the pause button and the stop button have enabled. These allow you to pause the collection process and of course stop the collection process. And while this is running, you'll start to see images show up in the thumbnail viewer. There we go. So if you click on the image viewer tab and select an image. You can take a look in 
the full size of the uh, images that were downloaded to your computer. Over here are the options for the image viewer. This is a zoom in, zoom out slide bar. You can also drag the image around. And we have some quick sizes listed here. Fit canvas, 200% zoom for example. And these are sticky, so if you select another image, it'll stay with that selection that you've made. In the same token, we have a zoom in, zoom out slider here on the thumbnail view. And we also have a quick refresh and a couple options on the uh, context menu for each thumbnail. I want to show you the properties tab or view. So for every selected image you could see some details about that particular image. You can see where it came from and the actual root of where it was from. So if you happen to like this image you can select the open or open in browser Open will uh, launch the native operating system file uh, viewer and Open in Browser will take you to that website where this image came from. I'm going to go ahead and stop this collection by pressing the stop button. And I want to show you real quick about perspectives. What perspectives do is give you a different way of viewing the images that were downloaded. The browsing perspective gives you a, a smaller uh, thumbnail area with a much larger image screen. We also have a classic. This replicates our legacy uh, product and the design that was in the legacy version where we have thumbnails followed by the large image viewer. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the settings for this project that we've created. You can go ahead and right click any of the projects in the Project Explorer and bring up Properties. These settings are much more advanced settings that you don't get when you create a new project. When you create a new project, you initially receive uh, just a handful or a small subset of these settings. So if you want to tweak anything before you start collecting, definitely go ahead and right click, and bring up properties, make your final changes, and then start the collection process. And I'm going to try to quickly go over some of these for you. Uh, at the top we have completion tasks. These are actions that Web Image Collector will take when a uh, project search is complete. These are some connection timeouts and the number of connections to use. This is just some general details about the project. And here we have some more advanced stuff, the file filters. Uh, this is also interesting as well. as This is how we uh, place images into folders and subfolders. You can change how these folders are named. Um, here's some image file filters. Real quick, I can go ahead and say uh, include GIF and add and that would go ahead and download only GIF files and ignore everything else and on the image size most of our projects come preloaded with some standard uh, advertisement sizes to skip these are going to go ahead and exclude these file sizes so that you don't see advertisements showing up uh, you can disable that if you want you can add some new sizes to that list or if you're looking for very specific size images such as let's just say uh, you know uh, 640 by 800 for a, for a small screen wallpaper you can just add that size in here and download only images of that size. Again we have our search engine uh, enabling and disabling. Sometimes you may find some search engines return images that just were not relevant to what you were looking for. And you can go ahead and disable those search engines here. These are the keywords. And then we have something called stop conditions. This will 
stop the collection process for any of these conditions that are set. So if I set this and tell it to stop downloading after 10 images, that's all you're going to get. You can stop after a number of downloaded megabytes. And you can also stop after the process has been running for a certain amount of time or a certain time on your computer's clock. And while we're on the topic of properties and settings, let me show you the last thing here, and that's going to be the uh, global settings. On a Mac, if you go to Windows Preferences on the menu, you can bring up the uh, system-wide settings. And I have the perspectives highlighted right here. And you can make some simple changes, such as setting which perspective to be as the default. Uh, you've got some settings for the help. We have our update uh, settings here. And through here, you can also check for more settings. I'm sorry, check for more updates. This is the license manager. This is where you can go ahead and activate the trial license. And we have memory settings. In some cases, you may be downloading a significant amount of files, and you might need to increase this uh, if you happen to run into any trouble running out of memory. This is the default amount that we give the product. Uh, many cases, you may have a lot more memory to give. So this is a, this is a good uh, setting that you may want to increase. Well, that wraps up this introduction for Web Image Collector. Stop by our YouTube page and check for videos about how to use some advanced features that we'll be posting uh, uh, in the future.